I'm back for part three of the Bible says this, what say you? Psalms 33 verse four, the A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. Now I'm gonna jump into this. I am just to bring you up to speed in case you are tuning in for the first time on the, on this is part three of uh, this segment. I am uh, exegeting, I am uh, uh, taking apart, I am looking at and studying the Reverend Barber's great speech that he gave to the Democrat Party convention, he brought the house to their feet. I mean, they cheered. I, I look, and I said this, and I'll say it again. Very few men can tell a story like the, 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 the Reverend Barber, and I have utmost respect for him. Uh, all I know about him personally is that he's a great guy. Uh, I, I have nothing uh, negative to say about him personally, but philosoph philosophically and doctrinally and even politically, we have profound uh, differences, profound. And one of the areas of our profound differences is how in his speech, or as stirring as it was, and many preachers said, man, he preached, you got to give him credit for. Well, you give him credit, you give him credit on style, but on substance, he was just wrong. And I'm reading this, the, the speech, and, 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 and uh, so let's jump into it. He says this, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. Our Constitution calls us to commit our government to establish justice, to promote general welfare, to provide for the common defense, and to ensure domestic tranquility. Now, to be true, we've never lived up to this vision perfectly. I agree with the Reverend Barber 100%. But this ought to be the goal at the heart of our democracy. I agree with him 100%. And when religion is used to camouflage meanness, we know that we have a heart problem in America. Now, I agree with him, but what, but what, what are you talking about? Now, if we're using religion to promote racism, if we're doing like the Democrats did, religion, use religion to promote the Klan, you know they were all Democrats, right? Uh, the Democrat Party produced the Klan. I agree with you. But now to hang blacks by in, in the trees and to ride through black neighborhoods and to light the cross, all those Democrats with hoods on. I agree with you there. But if you're talking about people who agrees with mm, St. Paul in Romans chapter one, as Paul denounces uh, homosexuality and all things LGBTQ. If we're talking about the God of the Bible, if you talk about the mighty Moses, as he said, thou shalt not lay with mankind as with womankind. I disagree with you. I go along with Moses. I go along with Paul. What are you talking about? What, what meanness? What are we saying that is mean? You're too vague here, uh, uh, Reverend. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 22, you know, it's, uh, you know you, you're calling us mean, but Romans 1 and 22 says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Who is being foolish is the man who disagrees with written scripture. The Bible teaches that all scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, is given by inspiration of God. The Bible declares that the scripture is good for, is proper for, for doctrine, for correction, for instructions and in righteousness. The preacher, as you said in your opening, uh, as you spoke to the people, that you are a preacher. The preacher has to agree with the scripture. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God, that is, it is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instructions, for instructions in righteousness that the man of God, Reverend Baba, may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So now you got to be a little clearer. I agree using the scripture uh, to camouflage meanness is true. But uh, are you saying that those who agree with God and who believe that Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis chapter 19 should have been destroyed? Are you saying that we're being mean? If we are, God's mean also. If we are, then the God of the Bible is a wicked God. So uh, I would like to know uh, what, what, what do you mean by meanness? He says there have always been forces that want to, to harden and even stop the heart of democracy. There have always been people who stood together to stir what Sister Dorothy gave called, quote, the revolution of the heart and what Dr. King called a radical revolution of values. Well, I want you to know Dr. King called homosexuality a problem. 
So uh, uh, when we talk about these revolutions of the heart uh, uh, and, and the revol a revolution uh, of radical revolution of values, are you saying that the Christian values should be uh, radically revised? What, what are you saying? I'm not quite sure here. I'm not, I'm not smart enough to get it. I say to you tonight that, th that there are some issues that are not left versus right liberal versus conservative, they are right versus wrong. Now on this point, I think I agree, I could not agree more. Home run Reverend, you Barry Bonds did the ball out of the park. We need to embrace our deep moral values and push for a revival of the heart for our democracy. I couldn't agree more unless you call the right to an abortion a moral value. Unless you call a man identifying himself as a woman and being allowed to use the lady's bathroom, even though he's a man, swab his mouth. The uh, DNA will tell you, man. Now, if you call that a moral value, I disagree with you. If you call people like me haters because we believe that a man should not have access to uh, a, a woman's locker room or a woman's dressing room simply because he self-identifies as a female. I mean, man, that's lunacy. I, I couldn't disagree with you more. What kind of moral values are you talking about? And sir, if these are moral values, what scripture in the Bible gives justify these uh, morals? Where does God say that these things are all right? Well, we're supposed to love people. Love is not a license to go along with any wicked behavior that a person decides to, uh, to, to, uh, to go along with, to, 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 to live out. He goes on to say, when we fight uh, to reinstate the power of the Voting Rights Act and break the interpositions and the nullification of the current Congress, we in the South especially know that when we do that, we are reviving the heart of our democracy. I'm for the Voting Rights Act 100%. But I will say this. I believe that in this day and time, to require a voter ID, and that, that law has been overturned, if having an ID is an impediment to an African-American voting, if in 2016 having an ID is an impediment, not being lynched, being hung, being shot, being harassed, crosses being lit in the yard, dad being shot, mom being shot, people being beaten, just the requirement of an ID, a driver's license, something that say you are what you, who you say you are. If that is an impediment, then as a people, we certainly haven't made much progress. If, if simply requiring that I have a card that says I am who I say I am, it, it, it will, will keep me from voting. Um, something's wrong with us. Um, I, I, you, you, I, I'm black, you who are watching this. I'm a brother. I'm so glad we can vote and I know the fight that, that took place and the, and the blood that was shed, the sacrifices that were made, the marches that gave me the right to vote. But do you mean to tell me that we are so far behind in the South that the requirement for a, a, a ID would stop us from voting? Ask President Obama in Chicago, they've always, black and white people, have always had to have voter ID. And when you check the you check the record, states where IDs are required, voter registration and voter participation for blacks is up. So keep in mind, I'm black, and I won't look. I'm black. I'm I'm a brother. I'm African American. I'm a Negro. I'm 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 of the darker hue. And I'm privileged to vote, and I vote for whoever uh, represent the positions that I hold dear whether they're Democrat, Republican, or neither. So, uh, I, but I agree with this. When we fight for $15 an hour, well, it says $15, and a union, and universal health care, and public education, and immigration rights, and LGBTQ rights. Here's the preacher. He starts his, remember, he begins by saying, I am a preacher. I'm the son of the preacher. I want to say, I want to know what immigration rights what rights are immigrants being denied? 
And why do you um, speak of immigration uh, as illegal immigration as immigration? Now, our country takes in more immigrants per year than any nation on earth. We are the we have some of the most liberal immigration laws uh, on earth. And yet, because someone believes that there should be uh, something that we should protect our borders, that that, that that should be a wall. And, you know, we scoff at the notion of a wall. Well, there's a wall on the border now. Somebody thought it was a good idea. We have a wall. And, and for those Christians who just, just scoff at the notion of a wall, the whole book of uh, Nehemiah, <laughs> you know, Nehemiah was a master builder. The whole book of Nehemiah is about Nehemiah rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. They built the walls to keep ne'er-do-wells and people whom they didn't want in out. And uh, uh, the Bible teaches uh, in the book of Acts that God's placed boundaries for people uh, in the world. In Acts, I think that's chapter 27, that the Lord uh, placed the, the boundaries in the earth and uh, 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 for, for, for people and where people would, would travel. So uh, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, these things, we're, we're talking about things that the Lord placed in, uh, on the earth himself. So. Uh, uh, as we deal with this, uh, actually, that's Acts chapter 17. The Bible says, Acts chapter 17, I want to be correct here. Acts 17 and 26, it says, And hath made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and have determined the times appointed and the bonds of their habitations. See, the Lord put boundaries. He didn't say people should be separated, but you can't have a nation without walls. So when you talk about immigration, are you talking about legal immigration or illegal immigration? And when you talk about public school system, what about private school system? What about the private school? What, 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 what school do your kids go to? I was somewhere not long ago. I was watching all of the Democrats and the uh, vote not uh, a year or so ago, and they were voting against the opportunity scholarship grants that were given. And just about every Democrat that voted against those opportunity scholarships that would help poor kids go to a private school, whether Christian or not, every one of them who voted against it, their children were in private schools. They had the money. These are your true racists. They're the ones who don't want the little poor black kids going to their schools. So we're going to keep them in the public school system and we're going to fight vouchers and everything else because we uh, Southern white Democrats who can pay to keep our kids in private school. We don't want them little darkies coming to our school on a voucher or an opportunity uh, scholarship. Those are your true racists. So what, what are you what are you what are you talking about? Universal uh, uh, health care. And you talk about the uh, LGBTQ rights. Uh, what rights? Have any? Uh, uh, Gary, did I miss it? Have they been hanging uh, homosexuals in the streets? Have the Klan been riding through the homosexual neighborhoods? Are homosexuals being de denied jobs? Are homosexuals, uh, when they have their conventions, they have their conventions at big hotels. Now what the hotels can't tell you is, in many times in those rooms, they got to put plastic on the walls. They got to cover up the furniture so that they won't destroy the furniture with the filth that's left after the convention is over. And those who are watching, especially who've been to those parties, you know I'm telling the truth. They're reported, but many times because of the, 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 the threat of, of lawsuits, the hotels take down and, and they're quiet. Patrick Wooden's going to tell you the truth. I'm just going to lay it out there and you do what you want. Do your investigation, you'll see. Um, what, what rights are homosexuals being denied? What rights? A man doesn't have a right to the ladies' room. A man, doesn't, a man can't change his sex. The Bible says this. What say you? I'll join you for part four in just a moment.